Hi, Scott Grove here. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to do curved joinering using a router and template guides. It's a very simple process, and the real secret is this little baby right here. This is an inch and a half template guide bushing, sold separately, or you can buy it with the kit that comes with a high tolerance template guide that fits on your router base. So with this process, very, very simple. All you have to do is make two templates that are a matching set. And that's what this is all about. What this does is it takes the router bit and offsets it to either side of the cutting seam. And you use your template to cut your hardwood. So hope you enjoy this one. Real fun project. And uh, thanks, Mike, for uh, ordering the table. And, and being my cameraman. <laughs> okay. This piece is made of black walnut and a spectacular piece of curly maple for the center wave, although the image doesn't show the curl very well. Since I didn't want the curly maple to be glued up, that was sort of the limitations of my wave. So I sketched out the wave based on the width of the board. And I cut that out of a piece of paper. I then transfer that to a half inch piece of MDF, which will be my template. To help smooth out the curves in my sketch, I use a thin stick to draw those curves a lot smoother. I then rip off a narrower section of the half inch MDF so I can cut the template on the bandsaw. I make my cut as smooth as possible, trying to stay right on a line. And I will then smooth that line out with a belt sander. It's really important to get this line very, very smooth with no drastic bumps. I'll feather out all those rough areas, locate high spots and low spots, and hand sand them down so it's a very smooth and even curve. So let me review this templating process. The first piece that I made was called the master template. And I want to be sure that that curve is really smooth and, and, and perfect because everything else is created from that. From there, I screw this half inch master template down to another piece of half inch MDF and made, it, made my cut. And in this cut, I'm actually cutting the outside edge. So I'm riding on the inside and I'm cutting the outside, creating another uh, template that I'll be using for the other side of uh, the seam, if you will. This bottom piece gets thrown away. I have an inside template, the master template, and an outside template. And with an inch and a half template guide and a half inch router bit, the offset is one half inch. So when I use the master template or the inside template, cuts it half inch off that template guide to the, out, to the other side of the seam, if you will. So I'm cutting the hardwood on this side. Then I use uh, the other side of the template and that moves the router bit to the other side of the seam and cuts the other side and I end up with two pieces of hardwood that perfectly match. Let me try to illustrate this again. This is my inside template. When I use my template guide which, with an inch and a half bushing, that and a half inch router bit, I'll use this side a little easier, that makes a cut down here a half inch from this surface, cutting that seam there. So this would be my good piece. Then when I use this template and make my cut, again, cutting a half inch off the template, it cuts to the other side of this seam. So this curve will match. These two pieces will match exactly by offsetting it on either side of the cutting seam. This is great for wavy curves, uh, low, uh, long arches, circles, you name it. It's, it's just a, a wonderful, very simple system. I'm going to be repeating this process a bunch of times because I have uh, two seams, so it would be four templates. And um, hope that makes sense. I'll uh, be posting this picture here and that's available and you certainly go to imaginewoodworking.com, check out the Ultimate Router Base and also I've written a book on this process, um, Hardwood Edging for Curved Tables, that really lays everything out. Um, I do like to use an offset router base, the Ultimate Router Base, that keeps my rod from tipping, gives it a lot of stability, more precision and more control. Hope that helps, hope you enjoy this, let's get to work.
One last detail about this templating system. It's important to know the math behind it. So again, we talk about this offset from your master template to the actual cutting seam. So for example, if you're trying to make that seam a very specific radius, say a 60 inch radius, you're going to want to subtract that half inch offset. So you would, when you're, you know, drawing this out, if you're using a large compass, it'd be 59 and a half then that would give you a 60 inch seam. So as long as you understand the math, usually on the serpentine edges and these sort of preformed curves, it really doesn't make any difference. But if, if, you're, if you're trying to hit a specific radius, be sure to compensate for that half inch offset. Okay, let's get to work now. After planning the walnut to its proper thickness, I check for color and grain and order my boards and then join them to get nice straight edges for our glue up. I then flip the boards alternating the growth rings so the entire panel will stay flat and won't cup in one direction. Since this is a kitchen, I use Titebond 3, their waterproof glue, and go ahead and glue up the entire uh, panel. Make sure that I'm using nice flat culls, clamping the entire piece together, keeping the panel flat. And then scrape off any excess glue on the bottom and then glue up the second board. I let each panel set dry overnight. I then trace the first template using a half inch offset parallel drawing disc. I cut this with a jigsaw. It was much easier than using a bandsaw. Screw the template to the hardwood at the ends, making sure that I have at least one half inch reveal. And locate the grain that may be steep going against the rotation of my router cutter. These areas I may need to do a climb cut. My first cut about an eighth of an inch deep, being sure that my template guide is tight to the template. And I skip over the areas where I might need to do a climb cut. I come back and do those separately. I repeat the cutting process, stepping the cut down a quarter to three eighths of an inch on each pass. Now ready to cut the curly maple and I use the mating template guide. I mount this to the board and trace a half inch offset line from the template guide. This board was a lot smaller so I cut this on the bandsaw. Mount the template to the curly maple leaving a half inch reveal and repeat the cutting process. Check the match and it is a perfect seam. Again, using Titebond 3 waterproof glue, I glue the two halves together. Again, I'm using culls on the top and the bottom to be sure the panel remains perfectly flat. Panel dry overnight and voila, my first perfect seam. I then transfer the second curve from my paper template to the first template, just to save material. And I repeat the process. I cut out the bandsaw and smooth out the curve. Unscrew the first half of the second template down to a scrap piece of MDF and clamp another piece of MDF, which will act as the second half of the second template and make my cut. A matching set of templates for the second line. Place the first template on the curly maple and again I trace a line one half inch off the template guide. I also transfer a line of the edge of the template and also do a reference line for re-registration. Using a jigsaw I cut away the excess material and I want to make sure that I'm staying to the outside of the line. The registration marks I reinstall the template and screw the template at the ends of the board. This, taking an eighth inch for my first cut, paying special attention to areas where I might need to climb cut, and then I step my router down a quarter to three eighths of an inch for each pass. Remove the template and check my cut. Place the second template on the second walnut slab. In this case I want to avoid a knot so I'm going to cheat the panel back just a little bit. Again, I trace a half inch offset, cut away the excess with my jigsaw, 
Again, being sure I stay to the outside of the line. We install the template, again leaving at least one half of an inch, and I screw it down to the ends of either panel. And I repeat my cutting process. This setup goes pretty quick once you get into the groove. With the template, I check the panel for a perfect seam, and no doubt it's a perfect match. the two panels together, again using the call to be sure the entire panel is flat and the seam is flush. After overnight drying, I hand plane and scrape the seam to be sure they're perfectly flush. One of the unique features in the Ultimate Router Base is my uh, patent pending reduction cut. Basically that means the distance between the spindle center and the round portion of the base is four and a half inches. But the straight edge is four and seven sixteenths of an inch to the spindle center. What that allows you to do is make a rough cut first using the round portion of the base and then by turning it and using the flat side or the straight edge, you take an additional sixteenth of an inch off for that fine cleanup cut. This way, you don't need to move your straight edge, um, which is always kind of a, a problem trying to get that um, moved. This allows for a very accurate rough cut and then fine cut. Here I'm using this feature to rough cut the edge of this hardwood table and then again do a fine cut I'm actually using this straight edge board that I joined. This will be glued on here. And we'll have a nice tight seam, perfectly straight. After I glued this darker piece of walnut on the edge, I then split the board in half, take the excess, flip it over, and glue it on the bottom for a built up edge. This way the color and grain all line up. Fill up the end of the table, I glued together a series of cutoffs so the end grain will then be consistent with the end of the table. also glued on a cutoff of the curly maple to line up with the wave. My poor man track saw to cut the end flush. One side of the table is going to have a gentle bow, so I do the exact same process as before. I use a stick to create an arc, I cut it off, and sand it and create a nice gentle curved template. I offset it by a half of an inch, and I cut off the excess. I was able to cut the excess off with my circular saw, since it was such a gradual curve. I aligned the template guide with the registration marks and simply went ahead and make my step cuts with my router. In this case, I doubled up the edge, so I'm cutting through two inches of material. I used the belt sander with a light touch to remove any of the cutting chatter marks. I radius the corner with the belt sander. The trim router put a quarter inch radius on all the edges. I sanded and sealed the bottom with two coats of lacquer and flipped it over ready for the final finishing of the top. Sanding is three passes with 120 grit. Sanding will reveal any dents that I had and I had one which I soak with water and steam out.
I then sand the entire piece, again three passage of each grit, 120, 180, and 220. I had one minor and short open gap on a straight edge seam which I wanted to fill with famo wood. Keep off the seam so not to get any filler in the open pores of the walnut. Fill the seam which leaves the filler slightly high and then I can sand it flush after it dries. Since this is in a kitchen area I want a very durable finish so I like to use Sherwin-Williams conversion varnish. It is a catalyzed system it's very resistant to water and household detergents. I spray two wet coats of six mils thickness, let it dry, and then sand thoroughly. I love this product. It sands really nice. You can really tell when it powders up like this. After removing all the dust, I spray two more wet coats. I sand with 320 grit between coats. And sand with a hard flat block to be sure the finish is completely flat. I wipe all the dust off with a tack rag. And spray my final coat for an off the gun finish. Scott Grove here from Imagine Woodworking and I got a quick finishing tip for you. So if you spray or even brush on your finish and you want to get a sort of off the gun or off the brush finish, uh, it's almost impossible because there's dust in the air and you always get these little nibs. So I call them dust bunnies. Just when you wipe your hand on there, you feel a little, little texture once in a while. So the trick is take a paper bag and either cork block and just put that on there and just lightly rub the surface. What that will do is knock off those nibs, it won't scratch the surface, and you'll then have a baby ass smooth uh, finish for, uh, for the final product and you won't have to rub the entire table out with steel wool. So, quick tip. I like to let the finish cure for three days and then ready for an install.